there is a, another very big realization that there is no such thing as brilliant or genius these are all is is not something that that anybody possesses it is a set of circumstances that come your way opportunities that i i'm not I, you know whether you believe in god or you don't believe in it all i am spiritual but the i'm i'm kind of neutral in this whole field but those opportunities do drop and there is something some force in the world that gives you that opportunity if you can take it if you can grab it you can then ride on it and it, at every turn if help comes and you don't recognize it then of course you missed it but if you recognize it it helps you to go where you want to go so it's like a radar of your your personal radar so what happened i got a job in philadelphia king thomas jefferson university as my because i wrote to 50 universities i got this job from there anyway that was one of the centers why i chose because it had heart surgery there were not more than 15 20 centers in the in the whole of united states that were doing heart surgery at that time i saw the drama of this whole it was amazing it'll take a long time to describe it but i'll tell you i i had i was in a general surgery program i went to my chief and i asked him i said who's the best teacher of heart surgery in the us or the in the world by that time because it's only the us where heart surgery had started so he's it came out frank spencer at new york university but why do you ask he has a five year waiting list and he doesn't speak to foreigners if i swear if he had not said the last sentence life would have been different i just latched on to that went home wrote a letter to spencer saying that i come from india i had wanted i, I you know there people are dying there i want to learn everything i want to go back to india but i suppose it's all futile because you don't speak to foreigners so that must have hit him because it's like i called him a bigot which was unknowingly but i had so he wrote promptly back he said no that's not true i love foreigners <laughs> so the whole thing right so if that whole sentence if i hadn't caught on in my head i i wouldn't have so then he said look there are 32 jobs as as a starting because in the in those days it used to be a pyramidal system 32 is to start four would become chief residents and only two would go to become heart surgeons so he said 31 are taken from our own medical college and harvard which we have a collaboration with there is one slot open you can compete for that so luckily the guy who interviewed me asked me the question which was the my my uh, like most curiosity i had read the bible on it and that got me that job anyway so then it went the pyramid and all that stuff i became then they asked me to join the faculty now i had arrived as a heart surgeon i was practicing in new york as, as at new york university on my own alma mater the point was how to get to india india that's when the whole journey started i finished i i, I finished my boards in 79 and i started looking so that's when again opportunity came one day mr hari nanda was tra- had come to new york he knew my parents and all he said nanesh uh, i'd like to see so, uh, your hospital and your and, and surgery also so him and his son i, I took him on a tour and while we were going through the operating rooms one, one of my seniors had was having problems with the heart surgery coming off pump which is what we do to to repair the heart he was having trouble coming off and then i just made a suggestion which worked, which worked and that seemed to to go straight to mr nanda and says look if you are teaching your your superiors i want you back in india right now let's let's make something i also want to do something for india that's when the journey started then we couldn't stand, find lands i mean help came in many ways it'll take a full year to talk about it but that's when when a patient was had to be operated on uh, it just I'll, i'll give you that i think it's it's important to f- fill this gap so one day i got a call i was in new york ramesh bandari was foreign secretary he had come to the un for uh, for the session he called me up and says naresh he, he used to speak like this he says naresh bistra bandho i said why he said we are going to delhi i said why he said a very close associate of mrs gandhi needs has had a heart attack you need to do a bypass nobody knows how to do a bypass 
you come with me and i said where will i operate in in, in india he said no no all india institute is available you do what you have to do so we got on to the plane we arrived here i was a state guest because this was like a associate here so with sirens blowing i go to pant hospital and over there we find the patient is on the ground they are giving him his last last rites uh, tulsi and ganga jal and all that that was the second turning point in my life from which was like divine you should get a call whatever i now you can imagine my my predicament is a big surgeon come from in, from us to save somebody's life and the guy is gone so i just felt his pulse he was still beating at 40 beats a minute and you could barely feel his pressure so i asked the chief over there i said do you have a pacemaker i put it in i turned it up to 90 his heart beats and the guy started waking up he woke up and then the family started to pull the tulsi out of his mouth and all that it was like a drama which is still very clear in my head anyway then we realized when we did his echo that his heart was functioning only 20% and there was no way you could be done in, in india so we flew him back to new york i operated on him he has survived he came back and went to see mrs gandhi with his traditional uh, fistful of roses and she said to him she said oh she said are you still alive i thought i, I was told you are dead so that's when she said when dr trihan comes to india please bring him to me that's how the journey started back because when i took i gave her the whole spiel she said what do you need i said we need a piece of land and she made it possible so that was the starting point of the return journey then escort chart institute history 6 years later we i built it from ground up and i returned at that time now two th- from this is now 88 now we are 2003 we have created the finest heart institute in you can comparable to anybody in the world but no, no that was not the important i we help more than 100 uh, other hospitals to develop heart institutes we trained 200 cardiologists 100 surgeons in the in those 18 20 years that i was there but in 2003 it became very clear to me one thing that we india was when i was growing up was called a developing country or underdeveloped country sorry then developing country then almost developed and suddenly in 2003 it began a emerging market so puzzling i felt that look they don't call us india because we are copycats we are master copycats including me i went and learned something i may have done many things when i come back and maybe evolved it for india but otherwise the origin is copycat and the origin lies in about 10 12 institutes around the world may it be the harvards and the john hopkins and the mayos and the uh, cleveland clinics of the world imperial college you know that kind of institution so that's when i said if india is to be master of its own destiny we need to create our own version of these institutions that was the thought with which the concept of building vedanta started so this was in my head and then then again it's history i mean this land was there and you know whatever they were i'll tell you another day but the point is that was the kicker so i it's not like i had planned that i was such a you know evolved person that from day one to i wanted to do this or do that these are things that happened and then fortunately uh, a pair of a couple of guys bought medanta not vedanta sorry escorts and kick me on my ass throw me out that was the best thing that happened because if it that not if it not happened i was trying to do both things work at escorts and try to create medanta so it would have never seen the light of the same for another half a dozen years so the fact that they came and in their wisdom thought that they need to get rid of me that was a great boom at that time it seemed like the heavens had fallen but i'll tell you one thing This is a friend of ours. When he first saw it on TV, he called me up and he says, "Look, don't be discouraged." And I, I would say to all your students, says the storm that is coming. And he's talking. This, uh, this uh, poet is talking to the eagle. He says, "The storm that is coming is not to destroy you. It is com- coming to make you fly higher." those things still stick in my in urdu is it's very beautiful the couplet is very beautiful when the way he recited it but 
the point really is it's true if it had not happened medanta would not have happened the way it is and now medanta has happened and fortunately the rules have changed because my my mission has always been to the i i under why i where why medanta i said i told you but the whole thing was to create a medical college or what we call medical school in american parlance of the new generation because medical education is very good in india but it lacks certain things on on humanities on relationships and if you look at it and if anybody is is fond of reading scriptures gita has the full lesson the the the, the interaction between krishna and arjun is basically tells you how a patient needs to be taken care of how those five elements that are accompanying a patient so we look at it as traditionally as doctors as somebody who's got cancer he's just got cancer so let's address the cancer that's not what he's coming you for alone he's carrying a huge baggage and the anxiety about himself whether whether he's going to be living pain financial family the whole baggage and unless you can address the whole baggage you cannot be a good doctor and you cannot heal your patients the way you should so these are lessons to learn in life so that's why i say now that we have arrived the journey hopefully i mean my incomplete journey was to make the medical college and that's what i was telling you the rules have finally been changed 31st of october the new national medical commission came into being and issued the the new uh, requirements and the fact that private hospitals can own medical colleges this is what i wanted because otherwise when you do it in a trust you know people were surviving by taking capitation fee all this we we didn't know, i don't want to indulge in all that so that's that's what we are doing right now so hopefully before i fade i will have built it and have the pleasure of having something like your you are the proud proud creators of a university i think that's a great great end to a journey i think you know to to spare that so that's my personal thing